thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. This video is part of the series of videos I post to try to help people out when it comes to aptitude tests like the civil service exam, OPCAT Live, TELSAT, and all of those things. This is part of our Wordy Wednesday series. Every Wednesdays, I try to post at least one new video lesson on language. And this video in particular is part na ating series on punctuation marks. This is going to be the first of the series. Today, we're going to talk about commas. And actually, my mini-series din ng commas kasi medyo complicated siya ng konti. So, it's going to be a three-part series. Today, we're going to talk about the top five uses of a comma. Susunod, pag-uusapan natin yung six, at six to ten. So, two parts yung lesson. Tapos, at the end, we're going to talk about a quick quiz naman on the exercises sa paggamit ng comma. Now, the comma seems like it's a simple thing, no? Maraming tao yung hindi lang nila alam kung saan yun ilalagay. Maraming tao yung nagagamit nila ng mali. So, we really need to dive deeper into this. Kasi, pagdating sa exam that you're going to take, whether it's civil service or college entrance exams, you would encounter problems like this, lalo na pagdating sa sentence correction, at saka sa fill in the blanks, tas yung choose the best sentence, which is something of a big problem talaga now, nowadays, kasi sobrang complicated nun. It seems sim simple, pero madali ninyong hindi mapapagawa and yung comma. So in order for me to explain this better, syempre I'm going to switch over to my PC so I can show you how to do it. I'll see you in a bit. Alright, ito yung lesson natin sa punctuation na comma. <laughs> I jokingly call it comma chameleon kasi ang chameleon, di ba, if it's an animal that can kind of fit dun sa kanyang surroundings. And medyo ganun din ang comma. Uh, madalas siyang nakakalimutan, madalas siyang hindi napapansin. Pero pagdating sa mga exams, malaking bagay siya. So, kasi minsan sa sentence correction questions, comma lang palang kulang or comma lang ang sobra. So, it's very important for you to know kung ano yung tamang sagot. Okay, so this is part one. We're going to talk, talk about five uses of the comma first. And then at the end, next video, um, you're going to talk about the next. So again, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're not yet subscribed. Para hindi nyo miss. Okay? Now, again, ito yung comma chameleon natin. We have the first five uses. So first, conjunction comma. Ito yung tinatawag na conjunction comma. 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 Conjunction Um, in some articles, meron, they go up to 21 uses, 30 uses. So, ang ginawa ko lang basically is I picked out yung pinaka mga kailangan pag-usapan, lalo na sa, sa larangan ng pag-e-exam, kasi ito yung laging lumalabas. Tsaka dito rin kadalasan confused yung mga Filipino. So, we're going to focus on those. So, again, first one, conjunction comma. I'm going to explain that later. Next, serial comma. Or itatawag din, meron, kasama na dito yung usapan about the Oxford comma. Next, we have the quote comma. And then, itong interjection comma at yung ating time comma. So, ito yung mga una natin pag-uusapan this week. Okay? Now, isa-isay natin sila. Again, uh, if it takes you multiple viewings to watch this and learn it, mas maganda. If you can take down notes, mas maganda pa rin. Kasi I want you to be mindful about your commas after this. If you're writing anything or if you're reading anything, pansinin niyo kung nasan banda yung mga comma at kung tama yung pagkakalagay sa kanila. Kasi pag hindi niyo siya pinansin, or hindi kayo aware sa kanila, dumilipas lang yung kama na parang hindi natin nabibigyan ng, kah ng kahulugan. Okay? Kaya kung mas, kung mas parang medyo bordering on praning ka na, <laughs> so kung praning ka na sa paggamit ng kama or kung tama yung pagkakalagay mo doon, mas maganda kasi it'll open up a new world for you to explore. Okay? So, let's talk about the conjunction comma first. We're going to hit it hard. Ito yung medyo complicated out of the five na ginamit ko ngayon. Uh, ano ba yung conjunction? Okay, tinatawag paano mo siya gagamitin. Now, the rule is this. Place a comma, maglalagay ka ng comma, before a conjunction between two independent clauses. Now, I put that in red kasi I wanted to emphasize that. Kapag sinabing independent, ibig sabihin they can stand on their own. So, kung natatandaan ninyo kung 90s baby kayo like me, merong commercial before ng ketchup yung sabi niya, I'm independent. Okay? Kasi ang independent, ibig sabihin, kaya niya mag-isa. Okay? Yun yung goal. Eh. To be independent, to be financially independent, ibig sabihin, wala kang utang, wala kang inaasahan, ikaw ay mag-isa lang. So, ang independent clauses, ang ibig sabihin niya, these are parts of the sentence that can stand by themselves. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin nun, meron siyang subject, meron siyang verb or predicate, meron siyang nangyari sa kanya. So, subject, predicate, kompleto siya. Ito yung ating mga examples ng conjunctions. Okay? Uh, madaling tandaan kasi if you see yung ating pina, um, memory aid for that is the word fanboys. So, fanboys. These are the conjunctions you have for, and, nor, but, or, yet, or so. So, when you see that in the sentence, okay, nakakita kayo nyo sa sentence, ask yourself, dapat ba may comma dito o wala? Again, lagi mo tatanong yan, may comma ba o wala? 
Now, para magkaroon ng comma, kailangan it's between two independent clauses. Let me give you an example. This sentence right here, hindi ko muna nalagay yung comma kasi I want you to think about it. Sabi, I was there when it happened, but I was too far to hear anything. Okay, now, ano ang conjunction natin dyan? Ang conjunction natin dyan, okay, letter B, but. Okay, this right here. This is a conjunction. Ang tanong, lalagyan ko ba siya ng comma? Lalagyan ko siya ng comma kung it's between two independent clauses. Or itong dalawang hinahati niya, kasi if you notice, dalawang hinahati niya, you have this first part, and then this na second part. Okay? So, yeah, underline ko ng dalawa para lang mas ma-emphasize. Again, you have two parts nung sentence niya. Parang hinati siya nung word na but. Kasi yun, silbi nung but eh, nung conjunction na yan. So, tingnan natin yung first part. I was there when it happened. Buo ba yung sentence? Obviously, yes, right? Kasi you have your subject, and then you have your predicate. Ito yung nangyari. Yung was there when it happened. Tapos, in this next part, do you have a subject? Yes, kasi may ayik siya uli. Tapos, meron din siyang predicate. I was too far to hear anything. So, pag binasa mo to, okay, kung tatakpan ko to, hindi ko babasahin yung, yung first part. I was too far to hear anything. Buo rin siyang sentence. So, ito buong sentence, ito buong sentence. Pareho silang buong sentence, okay, na parang pinagdugtong ng word na but. So, ibig sabihin, dahil sila independent clauses, kailangan may comma siya right here. May comma before but. Kapag yung fanboys nakita ninyo, for and nor but or yet or so, nakita mo yan sa sentence, ask yourself, kailangan ba may comma before? And again, it always comes before. I've seen Filipinos, like from all walks of life, put yung but, puput yung comma after nung but. Mali yun, ha? Comma muna bago yung but. Kasi ang concept nga niya is that, parang basically, pwede na itong maging period, kaya lang hindi mo period, kinama mo siya. Yun yung nangyari. Okay? Now, i-differentiate natin yun, ha? Ito, example natin kanina, I was there when it happened, but I was too far to hear anything. Again, ito yung comma na lagay natin kasi each part is an independent clause. Pareho silang, the, both of them can stand alone. Okay? Pareho sila. So, I was there when it happened, buong sentence, I was too far to hear anything. Now, ito example na next natin, I was there when it happened, but was too far to hear anything. If you notice here, magka, halos magkapareho yung sinasabi nung sentence, meron din siyang but, pero kung hahatiin ko siya here, okay, you would see this, I was there when it happened, buo siya, sentence, pero yung kasunod, which was too far to hear anything, okay, pag binasa mo yan, was too far to hear anything. That is not a complete sentence. Kasi wala na siyang subject. Predicate na lang siya. Okay? Kasi wala na yung I. Tinanggal niya, I was too far to hear anything. So, dahil wala na siyang I, dahil wala ng subject yung next na clause, hindi na siya buo, ibig sabihin, hindi mo, kailangan, hindi mo na ngayon kailangan lagyan ng comma before the but. Bakit? Kasi again, lalagyan mo lang siya ng comma kapag independent or buong sentence, kapag hinati mo mukhang buong sentence yung pinaghahati niya. Eh, kulang ito ng I, hindi siya makakatayo mag-isa, so hindi mo na ngayon lalagyan ng kama yung but. Okay? So again, maliit na pagkakaiba, kaya imagine ninyo kung nasa sentence correction yan, tas naka-underline yung part na yan, baka some of you may not notice it. Ako personally, ha, nawawaglit ko yan, lalo na kung nagmamadali ako. Kaya always be careful if you see any of the words sa fanboys, make sure na alam ninyo kung may kama ba siya dapat o wala. Next is the serial comma. So, ang rule, place a comma between items in the list and before, and, or, or. Now, ito yung controversial, yung tinatawag ng Oxford comma. Pero dahil American English ang ginagamit sa Philippines, we're going to add yung Oxford comma. Okay? Ano yon? Yun yung before, and, or, or. Now, best way again, just give an example. I love eating chips, cake, fruits, and ice cream. Pag cereal, ang ibig sabihin yan, hindi yan yung breakfast cereal, ha? Baka kukukrunch yun na sa isip natin or anything like that. Ang ibig sabihin yan is series. Kapag naglilista ka, pag meron kang list of things, like this, di ba? I love, ano yung mga love niya? Eating what? Ano yung ikinakain niya? You have chips, one. Cake. What else? Fruits. And ice cream. Okay? So, pag naglilista siya, dapat laging may comma sa pagitan nila. So, for example, in this one, I love eating chips. And then you'll add a comma right there. Cake. Dahil iba, hindi, iba naman ang cake sa fruits, lalagyan mo uli siya. Hati mo sila. You have fruits and ice cream. Now, eto na yung debate sa Oxford comma. Some people, hindi nila lalagyan ng comma yan. The problem is, kapag hindi mo yan nalagyan ng comma, ang dating niya is that, ang kinakain mo ay chips, one, cake, two, at yung fruits and ice cream, magkasama na sila. So, ibig sabihin nun, yung ice cream mo ngayon, may kasama ng fruits. 
Okay? May, parang mukhang bomba, no? Pero pag patawad nyo na yung drawing ko, nagmamadali kasi tayo. Okay? So, fruits and ice cream, ibig sabihin, ang bilang niya, it just counts as one. Pero kung gusto mong hiwala yung fruits at yung ice cream, ibig sabihin, meron kang ice cream, tas nakahiwalay ngayon yung iyong fruit, anong gagawin mo? Ibig sabihin, lalagyan mo siya ngayon ng kama. Mukha bang pakuan. Okay? Pagpasensya nyo na agad yung drawing ko. So, dito sa part na to, lalagyan mo ngayon siya. Kasi kung may kama na yan, ang mangyayari dyan would be, ang bilang na dyan, you have chips, okay, one, cake, two, three fruits, and four ice cream. Hindi na siya magkasama sa isang lalagyanan. Okay? So, again, yun yung importance ng cereal comma. Next, we have the quote comma. I discussed this in a video, yung ating uh, quotation punctuation of video. So, if you haven't seen that yet, watch it first. Uh, magandang tulong din yun sa inyo. Kasi last time na nag-exam, marami akong mga estudyante na napapansin daw yun sa exam nila. So, kung hindi nyo yun natutunan sa exam, eh, sa, before the exam, baka hindi nyo rin siya mapansin or mawaglit nyo siya. Lalo na doon sa mga questions na choose the best answer. Okay? Or choose the best sentence. Bibigyan kayo ng mga sentence na magkakahawig, tapos mamimili kayo kung ano yung patama sa kanilang lahat. Now, ang rule niya is place a comma before starting a quotation and before closing it unless it ends in another punctuation mark. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Pag may quote sa isang sentence, okay, alam niyo yung quotation marks, yung mga ganyan, quotation marks, before and after. Bago ka daw magsimula ng quote, lalagyan ka ng comma dito, before. And before din mo i-close yung quotation, unless na itong statement or quotation ends in another punctuation mark. Ano yon? Minsan, exclamation point. Minsan, uh, min minsan question mark. So, kung uh, ganyan yung ending, syempre, hindi mo naman pwede lagyan ng comma after yung exclamation mark. So, ito, iba yung rules dyan. Again, doon sa video na lang na quotation, punctuation, panoorin nyo na lang doon. Okay? Now, let's look at an example right here. Sabi, don't stray too far. He warned his daughter. So, ang quote part mo is this. Nag-open ka with a quotation mark. Now, dahil ito ang first word sa sentence, hindi mo naman pwede, kailangan lagyan ng comma pa dyan. Pero kung kunyari, may, meron pang part dito, then you will put another comma there before you open the quotation. Okay? Now, dahil wala namang period or exclamation point, ang ibig sabihin nun, bago mo i-close yung quotation, lalagyan mo ngayon siya ng isang comma right there. Okay? Very important yan. Kailangan may comma dyan. Okay? Pag walang comma dyan, mali na yun. And the comma always comes before the closed quotations. Okay? Bago may closing quotation, comma muna. Next, we have the interjection comma. Ang rule niya is place a comma after an interjection. Now, ano ba yung interjection? We have a, a few interjections. Sa samples lang ito. No? We have yes, no, and indeed. So, uh, picture this. Kapag meron kayong sentence na nagsisimula sa yes, no, indeed, okay, or... Um, Anything na sagot sa isang tanong, you have to place a comma after that. So, for example, okay, in that, se in that sentence like this, okay, yes, you have to be there. Since the word yes there is an interjection, di ba? Ito yung response mo dun sa naunang tanong, okay? And if you notice, pwede mo rin siya tanggalin, you have to be there, okay? Then, after the yes, you'll put a comma right there, okay? So, again, place a comma after an interjection. So, when you see yes, no, indeed, Sa beginning ng sentence lalo, make sure that you have a comma before, eh, after that. Kasi pag wala yung comma na yan, ang basa na dyan ay, yes, you have to be there. Hindi yes, you have to be there. You have to emphasize that this is separate doon sa kabilang part nung sentence na yan. Number five na use for this video, itong ating first part, we have the time comma. Ano ba yung time comma na tinatawag? Okay, pinangalanan ko lang ito, basically yung leading phrase parang preposition of time or kung kailan niya sinabi, may period of time usually na sinastart sa isang sentence. Kung ano man yung, sentence, yung phrase na yon kailangan may comma siya after. So, place a comma after starting a sentence with a time marker. I call them time markers. Basically, yung ano, after five years or in, in three years, okay, in a month, last week, anything that indicates time, okay, in the beginning of the sentence, if it sets yung time dun sa sentence na yun, kung kailan siya nangyari, or kailan mangyayari, ang gagawin mo is lagi mo siya ng comma after. So, in this example, after five years of silence, I heard him speak. So, if you notice, dun sa sentence na ito, meron siyang, meron indicator of time, which is this, after five years of silence. So, dahil yan ang indicator ng time, I'll put a comma right after it. That would look like that. And if you notice, again, my recurring theme dito sa commas natin, I'll also discuss this in the next video, no? Na 
anything na merong comma na ganyan, you would notice na one part, at least one part of the, either of those na hinati niya would be a complete sentence. Kasi kahit burahin mo yung after five years of silence, you would notice, I heard him speak is still a full sentence. Buong sentence pa rin siya, hindi siya fragment. No? So kung nagma-Microsoft Word kayo, hindi maglalagay ng fragment, consider revising. Kasi you have the subject and the predicate. Okay? So, etong leading statement na yan, which is sets the time period or kailan siya nangyari or gano'ng katagal na siya nangyayari or so after five years of silence, you have to separate it from the other part kasi ito ay tanggalable or hindi na kailangan sa sentence. This is just a time period. Put a comma right after that. Okay? So, again, ito yung ating mga inaral uh, for, for this session. We have yung ating conjunction comma, serial comma, we have the quote comma, interjection comma, and time comma. So, um, kung ano man dyan yung uh, medyo naguguluhan kayo, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, again, to um, follow along kasi in the next na topic, pag-uusapan natin yung 6 to 10 kasi there are 10 uses ng Kama Chameleon. Alright, I hope you learned something today. If you did, click thumbs up. Make sure to share this video with your friends, lalo na kung exam din sila para mas marami tayong matulungan. And if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon para ma-notify kayo pag lalabas na yung susunod na video sa series na ito. Okay, like I, I said, ito ay part 1 pa lang ng Kama natin. Next time, we're going to talk, to talk about the other 5. And then after that, we're going to have yung ating exercise for this. Hopefully, makatulong sa inyo sa exam para mas madali nyo ma-spot yung errors is mas madali nyo ma-pick out yung best sentence. Kasi that comma, that little thing right there, can spell yung inyong tagumpay or yung inyong pagkatalo pagdating sa exam. So thanks guys for watching. Never stop learning. Adja-adja. Kaya niyan. I'll see you in my next video and bye for now.